Hey everyone, Ampro Engineering here. For the battery installation, the last bit we're going to need is this. There's a few things here. There is a battery door. There is a hinge for the battery door. There is a mechanism here that will allow you to lock the battery door in place. And then there's also eight spacers here. Let's go ahead and break off the sprue real quick here. What I'm noticing here is this one appears to be stuck. Uh, the reason for this is when this was 3D printed, um, there's just some excess support material inside this hole. So we're going to try and pull it. Let's get the pliers out here. Oh, here we go. And here is our hinge. This piece goes here at the front. And it does actually have a orientation. This notch here happens to be for the shifter. So you do want to make sure that this is in the correct side. I will paint these and then we'll move forward. I've gone ahead and painted these parts. I've uh, ignored these little spacers right now. And I'm just going to focus on these three parts here. With the lowering of the motor into this current location, the shift servo does move to the rear. Fortunately, with this transmission setup, you do have the option of installing the shift linkage at the back of the shift rod. So that's a nice option here. In order to do this, we have to move the shift servo to this area here. I do want to caution you, however, this is the Tamiya Toyota High Lift. It is not the F-350, nor is it the Tundra. I do not know if there are components in this area that will interfere. It is possible that this moving of the shift servo will not be possible with the uh, with a different vehicle. Let's begin. So this piece here will go into the chassis kind of butted up against the transmission. On this side here, you'll notice a notch cut out, and this corresponds to the placement of the shift linkage here. I have gone ahead, and there's a couple of braces here that you have to remove, and that has to do with just putting the battery here. I believe on the F-350 and the Toyota Tundra, the battery is already back here because they have tilt beds. I'm not entirely certain about the Tundra, but I know that on the F-350 it is back here, so probably unnecessary on those two vehicles, but if you do have a Hilux, this is what I have done. I have loosened the screws that hold this rear plate together so that I can pry the chassis apart a little bit. There are two screw holes here on the end of this component. One screw hole, the larger one, is there for nothing more than alignment. The smaller one is where you're going to use a self-tapping M3. The reason this one here is only for alignment is the screw hole in front of it is already threaded. So we're not going to use this to hold it in place since we don't really need to. Now that we know that these larger holes are simply there for alignment, we do want to make sure that you drill these out with a 3.1 millimeter drill bit. And these here can be cleaned up with a 2.5 or 2.6 millimeter bit. This is just a three millimeter stainless steel rod. It's going to slide right in here like so once we place this piece here. However, I need you to know that we cannot make this as wide as this member here because again, we have screws coming in the side to align this. This is going to change depending on what screws you have. I'm using some six millimeter Allen head screws here. What I'm going to do is place this over the area where I want the hinge pin to reside. And I'm going to use, these are awesome, by the way. These are just little mini bolt cutters. Way, way more useful or uh, easier to use than a Dremel. All right. And I'm going to cut it right about here. And we'll just give it a snip. Remember, whether or not you're using these or a Dremel tool, please put some goggles on. The heck did it go? Huh. Put some goggles on, people. This is ready to be installed. So I'm going to slip this through this hole just a little bit. This orientation with the notch here is up and this area here is to the front of the vehicle. We want to put the battery holder in in this orientation and just kind of shove it in a little tiny bit. It doesn't have to go all the way in because it will align itself once you put the screws on the side here. This part is very unfortunate if you have a assembled truck like I do. You have to kind of wedge this piece in here and also get this piece in over the rear axle. So it's probably better off if you take the whole truck apart. Um, I'm not going to do that. Let's see if this is even possible. I'm just going to push it in here from the bottom uh, because the back of the chassis is disconnected a bit. I think I can. 
can. Awesome. All right, so that is in. Sadly, if you can see this, we do we do have a couple of screws protruding here that hold the rear shackle on. So that's gonna be lots of fun to get over. I'm gonna try and just scoot this little guy over those screws. It might help to open this up again. There we go. I can't believe that worked. All right, and push that all the way in and we're all set. Now I'm going to use these alignment screws here and just tap or thread these in. Remember this is a tapped hole on the chassis and that's it. You don't have to push it in too far because uh, it's just there for alignment. I've already got it started on this side. Now we do want to make sure that we don't get this jammed. I've got the alignment screws holding this thing in and it does look like there's a little bit of flex in there. We want to push that down a bit Got a 10 millimeter self-tapping screw here, and I'm going to place it right in there. Okay, so it should start to bite, and the screw will align itself. All right, so that is it. And next, we're just gonna snug up the alignment screw here. It feels best to just leave it a little bit loose at first since you want this one here to just kind of hold everything aligned properly. Since the self-tapping screw will hold the component actually in place. Same with this side. At this point, you can see here, the door is installed. This is really all the, all the travel that we want. And I'll show you why. This is going to be a soft, this is a soft cell LiPo right here. From the rear, you can just push that straight in and then close it right up like that. If you have a rectangular hard cell, I do apologize. I don't know if it's gonna fit since I don't actually own any. Uh, none of my cars accept those, so I really run these soft pack LiPos and I absolutely love them. We are almost done. We now have to put the retainer at the rear to actually hold the battery door shut, so let's prepare that. I snagged a couple of these uh, screw pin, cotter pin mounts. I don't know what they're actually called. These will thread into these holes here. And this is gonna be a bit interesting because they're not gonna thread all the way. Simply put, uh, I, I won't be able to. I'm gonna lose part of the nut right, well, there we go. Same over here. Be careful because you're gonna have the ends sticking out here being nice and sharp, so don't, don't poke yourself. To tighten these up further, I have another method. To do this, I'm gonna take a body pin, install it like so, and simply rotate it. It is my recommendation that you stop rotating the body pin when it is along, uh, the hole is along the axis of the vehicle, since this way it'll allow you to push these on very easily from the front or probably from the rear of the vehicle. If they're horizontally, it might be a little bit tougher to do that. So same here, we'll snug this guy up a tiny bit. Here we have it. On the side here, we have two mounting locations. We have one alignment and one physical mount. On the vehicle here, we have the physical mount and the alignment hole. On this chassis, this machined screw is a bit too short, so you can install a longer one. In the case of the self-tapping screw, I've already got one just sitting there. Uh, this particular chassis already has a self-tapping screw here. It is holding this rear bumper assembly in place, so I simply backed it out and just kind of held it there. I'm going to take this mount, place it in this orientation here, and this is where you need that third hand, which one day I'm sure will evolve into having. Of course, then we'll need a fourth hand. So it's just downhill really. All right, I'm gonna hold that in place there. And I don't know if you can see it. There's, so the screw is right here. And I'm just gonna hold it in place while I tap this in. Okay, that is in. Oh, look at that, look at that. It's always nice to see things align. I have reassembled the back part of the truck. The side panels here have been reinstalled. And again, you can see I've got a couple of Tamiya body pins here. If we take them out, there you go. And that is gonna be enough to slip this here battery into ye old hole. All right, drop it down. And of course it is gonna fall out because we haven't addressed that yet, but we're getting. In the meantime, we're just gonna plug these here. Flipping this back over, the next thing we have to address is the shift servo. The servo for the shifting is gonna go just about in this location, but because the battery's in this area, we have to raise it up a tad in order for the servo arm to clear the battery. This here is the servo mount. It's pretty simple. We are simply going to take a couple of self-tapping screws to hold the servo in place and mount it like that. I'm using a pair of 14 millimeter self-tapping screws with a couple of washers at the base just to 
make sure the load is evenly distributed. So we're gonna take this 14 millimeter self-tapping screw and just push it in there. Simply going to thread the servo in place. Let's thread that in and stop. You'll notice a couple of little bump stops in here, right there and right there. Those are there to prevent warping of the servo mount when you do tighten this up. And what is happening here is the servo mount itself, these pieces here, are going to come into contact with this plate at the same time that the plate comes into contact with the servo. So make sure that you do have these aligned properly because you don't want to warp the servo mount. We do want to make sure that we test fit this prior to the final installation. Here you see that I moved the servo ball stud up four millimeters. I actually had to drill that hole because it was aligning a little bit better, but that was with a prototype of this, which was a bit shorter. So I may have to move it to its original location. Let's, uh, let's see how that works. To mount this, we are going to use Again, a couple of M3 screws and use this hole on the chassis and this hole. These are both already tapped. And then the front one, remember don't over torque these. You don't wanna strip out the hole on the chassis. That would be unfortunate. Let's see how our clearance is. Here you can see where the shift linkage is. So what I wanna do is put a battery in here and see if it comes into contact with the servo horn. And I'm already seeing an issue. It is already gonna hit that servo. So pretty simple. That was why I had moved that servo mount slightly higher. I'm gonna pull this off and just trim that a little bit and that should clear the battery. Well, I went ahead and trimmed the end of the servo horn here and you can see with the battery installed, there is plenty of clearance. There's about two or three millimeters in there. Now we'll talk about how to hold this down from the top, but I just wanna show you the servos swing here. So let's go ahead and shift. And there we have it. First gear, second gear, third gear. Now to allow the battery to have some kind of a lid, we're gonna take these parts here that were originally used to hold the shift servo in place at the front of the vehicle and put them here at the rear. So one there and one in here. The problem is that this sits too low. It will compress the battery and in fact, it can cause the battery door to bow out and we don't wanna do that. I provided eight of these little three millimeter spacers and here's where we're gonna use the rear four. We'll use four more at the front shortly. I'm gonna begin by taking these pieces here. These are little, um, I guess they're nuts, kind of a little double threaded plastic component that would fly out of your hand and into oblivion and they would sit right in here to hold uh, some of the uh, pieces that we're no longer using down and i'm going to take advantage of this this piece here and use it again we're going to have to hold this brace put a self tapper through that this spacer then plop this there take your other hand and stuff it um right in here so I'll put this at this angle here thread that in off camera, I'm gonna do that three more times. I'm gonna install this one over here. Now be careful, you don't wanna put it into this hole here because when you do pull this servo arm back, it's possible it could come into contact. Both braces have been installed and there is just a little bit of play in the battery. I might just put a little dab of foam in here just to prevent any kind of vibration or rubbing on the soft pack of the LiPo. Probably not a good idea to allow the vibration to cut through the, the plastic on one of these lithium polymer batteries. Also, there is a little bit of of axial movement here. Oftentimes these batteries can vary in length. I know that this hard pack here is, you can see here, significantly longer. And I do wanna use this pack, but I wanna make sure that I can kinda change off which one I wanna use. So I think I might just put a little block of foam in here to prevent that uh, any kind of movement when I'm using this battery. We are nearly done. There's one more thing we have to do up here, and then this, this upgrade is finally complete. The last thing that has to be done is this piece here mounted to the front, which holds the front of the Toyota Hilux body in place. Again, if you're using the Tundra or the F350, I believe this part is different, but please don't quote me, I don't own those two vehicles. So I'm simply going to mark out where I have to cut. It is gonna be a sizable cut as I did raise the placement of the transmission. So we do have this boss here, which is not there before. This was where you would adjust the slipper clutch. Uh, and previously the slipper would be underneath here. So we do have to take off this chunk of plastic here, but that should allow us to place this in here. Let me go ahead and get the Dremel out, cut this piece off and we'll move forward. 
I went ahead and just cut this back area out here. I also used some flush cutters and got rid of the little chamfer that was left here because these were hitting the screws. And now I can use the screws that came with this along with the remaining four spacers here. Plop that right there. I'm gonna screw these in real fast. Again, that you do wanna use all four of the spacers just right underneath there and we will be all set. The front mount has been installed. You can see here that I did use all of the three millimeter spacers and I think we are finally ready to fit the body. The last modification that you are going to have to do is remove this center screw. Mine comes into contact just slightly, um, but I don't want to put any undue stress on this body and I don't think it'll be missing the screw all that much. Here we have the body placed back onto the vehicle. You did see a moment ago that I do have the light sound and vibration kit attached to this body, but I wanna be very clear that installing it with the modifications that we have done to this particular chassis will require additional modifications and I assume quite severe ones. Although I don't wanna say it will not fit in this vehicle, I do want you to understand that it will require significant work to get it in here. Now, this upgrade wasn't about the light and sound kit. This upgrade was about clearance. So you can see what we have gained here with the transmission. Originally, it was somewhere, somewhere ridiculous in this area here. And what we have done is dramatically raised it so that we have a high lift that has a purpose to have been lifted high if that makes any sense. Also, a side effect of that was we did remove the battery from this area here, improving the scale appearance. Overall, I think this is fairly successful. I am happy to say that this build is finally complete. The truck overall does have some future upgrades that I, that I do plan on doing, but for the time being, I think that this chassis modification is going to make this a lot more fun to drive. Over the years that I've owned this truck, I have been very, abusive to it. Uh, the body obviously is in, in pretty good shape. It's got a lot of miles on it and uh, you know it, it has been wonderful but the limitations of that transfer case have been unfortunate to say the least. Now however we do have a high lift that was lifted high for a reason. These tires are a bit on the small side. I'm going to put some slightly larger ones on there but you know you can see here that well it's got a lot more ground clearance. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, it's been a, a very long project and I'm very happy to see this to be completed. I'm sure that there's a lot of questions out there. In fact, I'm sure many of you out there have better ideas for how to place the battery or how to move the transmission, how to adjust the steering servo and the shift servo. And I would love to hear these. I do appreciate your feedback. And if you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed kind of the, the things that I'm interested in here, please subscribe to my channel. Also, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Ampro Engineering on both. And before you take off, please take a moment to visit the band Blue Pinto. They are the ones that allow me to use their songs in my video. And a link to their Facebook page can be found in the credits. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.